So, Derek, we've got Hurricane Irma. No, I'm sorry. Eartha. 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 That's the, that's yeah. the one they named it. Eartha just hit so Eartha. Yeah, South Carolina yeah. today. Tropical storm. But I think I think Bertha was what we were experiencing. I think that was what moved up the coast. Yeah, that's what we had for two days. It just turned into Bertha. So we had ten inches over the weekend. Ten inches of rain, Jay. Ten inches of rain. Incredible. I mean, look at. I could not believe like Miami, man. Wow. I mean, that's what I told you. I really, yeah. Yeah. I didn't even know that, but I just know that if it floods here, it's real bad in Miami. I mean, was, <laughs> and then I saw. I mean, there are people like, swimming, not not just like, not, I mean, literally like, like they're being funny about it, but they're like swimming across their, across from one condo to the other. Wow. Of course, what part of Miami? Downtown, Brickell. Brickell. Same area that had the problems during Irma, yeah? Yeah, yeah. We are live. It is showtime. Five, four, three, two, one, and you are live on <laughs> JK TV. You want to go a little bit early, JK? Let's do this. No, no. <laughs> I, I just can't help myself, you know. It's always better that I have a moderator because I'm good yeah. yeah, we don't want you controlling him too much. You can't do that. Okay. Yeah, so 10 inches of rain. I mean, I've my pool's overfilled at least four times. All of our shrubbery's loving it, you know. I pulled the front gutters off of my house, and I mean, the bushes right below the roof line there, just they have just overgrown. They're, they're so healthy. We definitely needed the rain. And my yards never look so good. Somebody's trading out monies over there. My aunt's cruise. <laughs> I've, I've, uh, I've abandoned all hope of having them keep quiet. I just had to bribe them with, uh, with new apps on their phone. So hopefully, I'll hear everybody screaming in the background. No screaming. So an app. That's that's the. That's become, the prize, huh? Okay. I become that. I become that parent. <laughs> <laughs> That's what home quarantining will do to you. You know, I'm just making notes here. I'm just keeping track of all the little things we need to. <laughs> <laughs> Jay will get you an app if you need to. That's right. That's right. It's all about bribing. That's what I figured out now. It's all about bribing your kids. <laughs> that, that's so funny. I literally just bribed Phoebe to grab my little sandwich box and take it because she wouldn't take it back to the to the kitchen. And so well, I'll give you a dollar. She goes, I don't need your money. <laughs> better yet better yet she said i don't need your money i've got your money already right <laughs> i mean seriously uh, that's good eh? that's good let's ride tomorrow jay sure yeah you want to get out all right what time i got i've got my bni meeting in the morning i forgot tomorrow uh, you want to do, do friday yeah it's right it's, it's right for sure friday Right, it'd be good. How that. about the gyms? Are you have you gone to a gym yet or no? You know, right now I'm not. I'm not Jones, and to be the first person at the gym, to be honest with you. You know, I um yeah. I, I get it. You know, but I just um. I just feel like you know what? Let me let me just let let people kind of run yeah. run through it a little bit more. I mean, yeah, a couple of my buddies over there at Powerhouse are like, "Hey, you're missing out." I'm like. I'll watch and see. <laughs> That's kind of how I feel. That's yeah. Kind of feel. On that note, guys, let's get started. It's uh, okay. two o'clock. It's time for Team JK TV episode seven. Let's do it. Hey, 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 hey. we are so here. We, we got two of our favorite favorite uh, guests. We've got Jay Granary and Jonathan Keith. 
and we're going to uh, take you up close and personal in three of our listings, our phenomenal listings um, that t Team JK has. Um, Jonathan's going to be telling us about 26, 2756 Northeast 27th Avenue in Lighthouse Point. Beautiful home there. Um, Jay's got uh, a mini mansion, I'd, I'd have to say, at 2700 Northeast 8th Street in Boynton Beach. And uh, he'll be telling us about that. And then also a property in Oakland Park, 602 Northeast 33rd Street. Jonathan, take it away. Tell us about Lighthouse Point. Oh, I'm ready. Here we are. Hey guys, hope you are healthy and well. Um, let's talk about Lighthouse Point. We are just a couple blocks from Naughty Dog and the old school Caps restaurant. If you've ever been to Caps, my wife and I got married right behind this house at the Hillsboro uh, Inlet Lighthouse. This is 2756 uh, Northeast 27th Avenue. Lot. And this home has tons of upgrades. It's got an automatic water shutoff system. You can see as we're walking through the gates, it's kind of fast over there, but I'll kind of shift you through. You can see the vaulted and the volume ceilings. You know, kitchen's totally custom with Wolf appliances and Sub Zero, uh, Wolf and Sub Zero appliances. You can, we've got a substantial amount of impact glass. There's a few windows left, but they have shutters. Um, you can see that this is a mother-in-law suite down below and then a potential three bedroom floor plan on the upstairs. The, uh, the loft could be actually the fourth. And, uh, and, and obviously this house right now, I gotta tell you is the ideal perfect home, especially if you wanna expand. Look at this master bedroom, it is big. Um, price on the home is 890. And um, it, we're here on the outside, we've got a jacuzzi and a pool. Um, and you'll see that that is right alongside of the double lot behind. There is a gas fireplace outdoor, along with the uh, along with the the large grill and side burner. Look at that lot, over a quarter of an acre, and you can see the peaks on the property. It is wrapped around. Um, it pretty much takes up the entire corner of 27th and uh, 20 the 27th and 27th corridor there. Um, right there at the, I mean, literally less than eight minutes to the beach. Um, okay, so that's 2756 Northeast 27th Avenue and Lighthouse <laughs> One. Hey, uh, Jonathan, I've got a couple of questions about that place. Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm here. Go ahead. Um, what's access to the beach? How, so, what do you access have to do to, to get to the beach? Over at Hillsboro or 14th Street, that would put you right on minutes away on either side. Okay, and we've noticed that a lot of people from the Northeast have been coming down and looking for properties to expand and, and sort of get out of the vertical and get into the horizontal. Th it, th tell us, this is a good, great house for this, right? I don't tell know us. of any other house in the Northeast sector under a mill that would be relative towards a Northeasterner wanting to match up with what they have up North compared to what they have down here for under a million dollars. They have it. They have a lot. Okay, New York, Connecticut, all those all those folks, New Jersey. If you're if you're yep. watching, that's there you go. All right, thank you, um, Jay. Hey hey hey. You, uh, I uh, made a mistake there early on. I talked about 2400 Northeast Eighth Street in Boynton Beach. I apologize. It is Fort Lauderdale. That's uh, okay. Mistake. That's okay. In Boynton, <laughs> in, Boynton, in Boynton Beach, this this house would be worth about 10 million. So you know. All right. Well, that that's a, there's a big difference there. So can you tell us about it, please? <laughs> So uh, great property, um, probably the best thing about this property uh, I, I like to call is location, location, location. It's, it's, it's actually located in a kind of a semi-gated private area called Sunrise Intercoastal. A lot of locals know about this. Um, kind of the lore of this is, is that gated, uh, you know, we don't have a lot of gated communities really here in, in, uh, in sort of the east side of Fort Lauderdale. So it's a one way in, one way out scenario. Uh, most people would know it uh, sort of proximity kind of behind the Galleria Mall which means it's within walking distance of the ocean. Um, one of the big lures of the area uh, is that it's underneath the Bayview um, Elementary School Zone. So this area also is kind of a, a sister neighborhood um, mm -hmm. to, uh, to what we, we all know as Coral Ridge. Um, smaller part of a smaller neighborhood, 
um, really sort of outlined by the water. So uh, they, you know, it's referred to the inter Sunrise Intercoastal because it has the intercoastal waterways uh, behind it. Uh, very walkable community. It's got its own little private park inside there as well too. The house is amazing. Um, it's a new built home back in 2015. Uh, the owner was, uh, was an engineer. Um, and so he built the entire house. It's, it's built like a, a, a bunker. It's, it's, it's CBS block from, from the ground all the way to the ceiling. And uh, it's about 4,900 square feet. So it's a lot of property, uh, five bedrooms, five baths. Um, he, tricked the, he tricked it out with you know, some of the nicest high-end uh, you know, materials. Uh, you know, we have a really nice feature slate wall with a decorative fireplace. It's got an interior balcony as well too, which is amazing. Uh, so it has a lot of volume and a lot of natural light that comes in. It's got a rooftop terrace um, and it's got two bedrooms on the ground floor, which I think it's great for those out of towners that might have, uh, you know, a, a live in nanny or maybe some in-laws that stay for a while. Nice. It's priced nice. at uh, 1.7499. So, uh, you know, for a new construction property, it's actually priced below uh, new construction prices, which is great. Thanks, Jay. So the house mm. is five years old, you said? Five years old. Yep. And location, location, location. Talk, talk about location. So this one is behind the gallery mall, you said. So that, that puts you at the Sunrise Bridge, but you're right, right smack dab in between Oakland Park and uh, uh, Las Olas, too. So exactly. it's a perfect location. You could walk to Bayview School from this, from this house, actually. So it's great. Excellent. All right. Thank you. We have one more house uh, that we want to uh, share with you today, and it's 602 Northeast 33rd Street, and that is in Oakland Park, right? I got that it. is in Oakland Park, yes. <laughs> so, right. where, so, so where, where, uh, where the other house was on the, the luxury spectrum, this is on the opposite spectrum. This is a very affordable home. Um, it's actually sandwiched in between Oakland Park and Wilton Manors Community. Uh, so a lot of like boutique two, two homes, <laughs> three bedroom, two bath homes. This house was as really unique proposition as the lot. It's a huge lot as you can sort of see the video and sort of the, si the side there. You know, for anybody that has a work truck business or a place that they need extra storage, that backyard lot is massive. Um, it easily could, you know, it's kind of a blank canvas. You could easily put a pool back there, but certainly if you have a boat, uh, or like I said, work vehicles, they store back there as well too. The house is pretty cool. It's broken up with a two bedroom uh, and one bath on one side and almost has like a studio bedroom to the right of this, uh, this kitchen area. Bathrooms, showers, kitchens, all remodeled. The owner um, you know, did all the work. He was a licensed contractor. So the house is, has all of the most uh, recent updates as far as PVC piping, all new uh, electrical updates. Um, and the floors were really cool. They remind me of Dade County Pine floors, which had been sanded down and actually, uh, you know, lightened up and refreshed as well too. So a great buy for that neighborhood. Uh, impact windows throughout the entire house. Uh, so if someone's looking to break into the neighborhood, you know, under that 350 price point, this is a fantastic buy. Awesome. So that uh, the lots uh, almost 10,000 square feet, right? Yeah. Yeah. Big Miami lot. Pine floors. That's a rarity. Real cool. It's got a very cool studio kind of feel to the interior. Non-working fireplace, but decorative, and it look you know it adds a lot of character to the to the room. And what about that third bedroom? Is there a separate entrance, or is that uh... not a separate entrance? Um, but it has all it has all of the uh, hookups uh, for building like a kitchenette. So this would be an interesting proposition if someone did want to add sort of a, an exterior entrance to that. You could totally make that room into sort of an efficiency. And, and, you know, in today's day and age for Airbnb income, you can make that into an extra income opportunity. Very good. Yeah. All right. All right. So a couple of quick things. Um, JK, how do people get in touch with you about 2756 Northeast 27th Avenue? Always available. Always available, Derek. I appreciate it. You can catch me for anything regarding resources and specifically, obviously, my listings and, and Lighthouse Point as well. 954 uh, 709 9742 on Lighthouse Point. Okay, guys. All right. And Back Jay? Here. Yeah. How do we get in touch with you and, and how do we set appointments to see these houses? So, uh, absolutely, one of the things to pay attention to for this weekend, I'm going to be shooting a live uh, virtual tours for both of those two properties uh, the luxury property at 12 and the uh and the uh oakland park property at one o'clock just get on my uh get on my facebook page and you'll uh and you'll actually have uh an opportunity to take a live tour with me and ask me any direct questions of course you could always call or text me uh at 310-713-9090 
um, and, uh, or check out all the listings that we have uh, to offer on uh, askjtoday.com. Thanks, Jay. Cool. Great properties. Okay, so a couple Good of Jay. quick questions because it's been a busy, busy week, right? We've had Memorial Day uh, on Monday and we've yeah. had a lot of rain. Yeah. A yeah. lot, a lot of rain. Yeah. A lot, of rain, a lot of rain, a lot of buyers. Yeah, so so let's talk about that for a second. Um, uh, it's on a lot of people's minds. We we've we've um, had the questions brought up. Um, what are your thoughts about this? It's a little bit early for hurricane season. But we've had two named storms. What do you think? I think it was a cleansing. I look at this as a Corona cleansing, <laughs> right? Yeah, like for everything. Washing away all of the <laughs> all of the 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 May the May funk that we went through. Right. And uh, we're starting June off. It's like almost like it's almost like it's almost like January first. It's like a new it's year. Kind of, yeah, it's queued up. It's queued up. You know what they're saying? It's queued up for third quarter to be January first again. Yeah, yeah, it is. I like that. So we're just getting it out of the way. So this anybody that's watching out there, we're just getting this all out of the way. That's that's it. That's what we're doing here. Yeah, there. You know, it's interesting. You know, the segue from the from the rain to kind of a new beginning that Jonathan's talking about. It is true. We ha we've had about thirty percent of our listing. Uh, our listings right now in a in a in a temporarily off market withdrawn status. So imagine what's going to happen during the summertime when things start getting back to normal as they already are, uh, with that inventory coming back on the market. You know, we already know the buyer market's strong right now. We're at we're at a, a, a once again another all all record uh, low. I'm 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 actually going to be applying for probably refinancing and trying to trying to mirror what JK got, but. Uh, yeah. You know, but we're at like three three right now. So you know, it's it buyers think, right now. Yeah, maybe lower. Maybe you lower. get to two five. I would, but then <laughs> ideally, it's usually a point. You want a point. You know, the, fi the fifteen year or four percent. Yeah. Fifteen year is at two point eight right now. Fifteen years after yeah. two point eight. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, JK's got some tricks up his sleeve. Out there. I don't know how he's getting those little rates, but you know. <laughs> um, but you know, the summertime. <laughs> summertime's going to be huge, you know. So I, you know, the weather is. Uh, the weather is what it is, you know. People still want to come to Florida and retire, and they certainly want Absolutely. to escape uh, their uh, their sheltered homes up north. And I, I think it's just created even that much more of a pent up because right when they were ready to get ready to get out, it was raining. You know? Yep. 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 Yeah. Um, and definitely, it, definitely it, something to look at. And you, you know, let's point out one other thing: we still we still have super super low levels of supply here. Because yeah. I think it's important to, to note this stuff. You know, we hear mm -hmm. the, the national headlines right. about what the real estate market is doing, but you really have to focus locally. And here, 100%. I think we have a completely different scenario that's about to blow up simply because, I mean, we, we've got a lot of buyers, like Jay was saying, and then yep. we've, our supply is low. So yeah. this is the time. Yeah. Yeah. So no, I would say, you know, to our northern buyers coming down, I mean, we're obviously always out looking for the good deals for everybody, but from a from a, a good deal perspective, if you're really looking for the area to find a good deal, probably the condo condo mm -hmm. communities are going to be the spots to try to find you know some opportunity because there's going to be a you know there's already there's, we've already had a a uh, uh, an oversupply in there, and then from the single the single family side, I mean, man, I I'm getting so many conversations. I'm no, I know you are too, J.K. I mean, people want a good deal in the single family home area, but right now with the low supply we haven't seen a huge drop in pricing. So it's, it's, you know, there, there's not like distressed homes out there just yet. So. Yeah. True. Yeah. I mean, I, I was busy all weekend and, um, and we're going to be busy ahead. We're, we're going to catch up, you know, we're going to make up for some lost time. And, um, you know, I, uh, I mean, there's no, we're going to put all the energy we possibly can to, to, to get the activity we need to get from some of the sellers that we had left off pre you know, when it was pre-COVID and then as we went into COVID, we have some sellers that still wanted to sell and still want to sell. Right. You know, so we're going to have to get it done. Right. All right. And thanks for uh, sharing your opinions on that. Um, JK, speaking of new beginnings, you got some new information about credit that I yeah, think everyone yeah, should definitely. hear. I think if anything, this is going to be a good tip for all of you guys. Um, some, I was doing a lot of homework and and talked to some other professionals about you know what's going to happen with with people's credit. We're seeing six out of the ten uh, Americans that have been surveyed across the nation are saying that their their credit's going to be impacted. So um, that's one of the main reasons I wanted to come on and talk about credit. There was with a stimulus package. 
um, you know, banks and lenders were given 120 days before they could report. So food for thought. But before I get a little deeper and give you some pinpoints out to the open public, I wanted to talk to you about, if you guys about one thing that I uncovered while I was doing my research. Um, it's called a disaster code called the AW, right? And this was an old school code that they used for um, for Hurricane Harvey when, when Texas and Louisiana were hit. 40% of the consumers um, had that code applied to their credit report. Now, the credit reports, the bureaus, they're not gonna do it automatically. You know, you've got um, Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion, um, they're not gonna do it automatically. What they're gonna do is you gotta reach out to them and ask them to notate that on your report and the pandemic corona slash COVID-19 does, uh, does qualify for that code. It's called the AW code. So that way, you know, people are aware that, you know, if you are having some credit issues, the notations are in there that the only time you had credit issues, hopefully, were when you were in a pandemic scenario in case you're, you know, falling behind. Um, so keep that in mind. Does that code get you out of trouble? No. Um, you know, and some of the report had, that had mentioned, um, you know, the lenders and credit bureaus, um, they'll add it and it's purely cosmetic and the credit score generated by the credit bureaus from any delinquent reporting being added to the account will be reflected through, um, your FICO will be reflected through, uh, let's take a look here. Um, it's gonna be directed right under, hang on, I'll tell you, uh, your Vantage score. That's where it's going to affect. So it'll be your Vantage score. Um, so it'll protect that. Um, some other points I wanna to mention to you to get a little deeper though, you obviously wanna check your report as a open consumer, you're, you're due a free credit report every year. So that's, that's, by the way, that's federal law. So Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion have to give you a report. You can access reports through annualcreditreport.com. So check out that, that little tip. Okay, guys, make your payments on time if you can. And if you can't, go ahead and contact your lender ASAP and see if you can get, get some sort of workout program with them. And, um, and, and, and if anything, this is really, really important. If you agree to anything, make sure that you get it in writing and try to get it where if you have an agreement, say you know, they're saying they're gonna give you 30 and you guys are negotiating 90 days, get it in writing that they're not gonna report till after that agreement is over with in case, um, that, and then maybe you need to make another phone call after that, right? So that would apply um, to deferral payments, right? To yeah, people and, to keep you know, that mind. a lot of the banks, A through Z, if you Google them, they'll tell you exactly what they're allowing for forbearance. And, um, and, and listen, you know, everybody has their own opinion about forbearance and, and, and allowing things to go late. Um, you just, whatever you do, just get it in writing for the bank um, and try to be proactive instead of, you know, being late and then handle it. If you know you're going to be late, go ahead and handle it ahead of time. Say, hey, this is going to happen. Um, you know, declaring a hardship. Some major credit card issuers are helping consumers um, by claiming um, federal hardship through the coronavirus by increasing their credit lines. Can you believe that? They're actually allowing you to increase your credit line and waiving late fees and foregoing interest charges. Yeah, that's happening. Wow. Um, so let me repeat that. I want to make sure that that's clear. Major credit card issuers are helping by foregoing late fees and interest charges and increasing the credit lines to get you through, especially, I think it's probably off of a case by case basis um, based upon what your history has been. Uh, but yeah, so keep that in mind. I think it's a lot of it boils down to your ultimate communication with um, who you're talking to and obviously which banks, you know, request that the lender add a statement to your credit report indicating you've been impacted, you know, which goes back to the AW code that I talked about initially. Um, and then just try to budget out and make a plan for your for your credit, um, and uh, and I and I think those are some really good tips that I love to see you know you guys embrace, especially if you're having some challenges out there. And we've got some credit professionals that we work with on a daily basis. You know, plenty of over professional uh, professional professional creditors, and um, he does a great job. And yeah, that being said, I think that that pretty much covers my report. Back to you, Derek. <laughs> Thanks for sharing that, Jonathan. I, I didn't know anything about that AW code. That's really, 
uh, good information. I want to find out more about that. Hey, hey uh, can I ask a question, JK? Yeah, shoot. When you were researching uh, some information on, um, on uh, you know, about, about the credit reports, did, did you happen to see some information about deferment the deferment processes with the banks because obviously that was a big question we got uh mm -hmm. you and i both got from a couple clients yeah. at the beginning well the mortgage brokers all that yeah and, and and that goes right back to what i was mentioning about getting everything in writing um because it seemed like we had a lot of different mortgage brokers and banks mentioning hey if you for if you go for forbearance you're going to be affected by credit well we all know now that there's a 120 day um there's a 120 day grace period before they can create um, report the, before they could start reporting. So that was that was revised through the stimulus package once that came out when they were doing PPP and uh, EIDL and all that stuff. So just food for thought there. Um, and I, I, think was I think it was 120 days after it once we're you know back running again. So right, right. There's, yeah. there's there's some there's some things that need to be ironed out on that. Um, and I'm sure maybe some of the credit professionals out there have a little better idea of how that's playing out. But ultimately, Jay, what I can tell you is that whatever deal you stroke with anybody when it comes to creditors, just make sure it's in writing and do whatever you can to ensure right. that they're not going to allow uh, reporting until after your agreement's expired. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Good, good advice. Good yeah. advice. Yeah. So, yeah, good stuff. All right. Well, listen, I think that that pretty much calls it for Team JK TV. Derek? Wait, wait, JK, do you have any birthdays oh. you want to shout out? Oh, Jesus. You know what? I think we were running on time. Let me see if I've got some birthdays. Okay, check. Hang on. I've got them. I've got them right here. I've got to burn through them. Let's take a look here. And here we are. Okay. Alex Montalenti, happy birthday. Oh, Jack Seiler, our former mayor, Jack Seiler. Happy birthday. Scott Smith, Stephen Scoop. And Bill Guybertson, happy birthday, guys. For some recent birthdays, we want to give a big shout out to Dondi Hopkins, one of our uh, one of our compass agents out in Plantation. Happy birthday, hey, Alex hey, Fidel. Dondi, Alex, oh, Fidel, nice. Yeah, Alex Fidel over there at ISG, you know, big dog over there. Uh, Katie Powell, uh, Andrew Balick, he's over there at TAP42. Happy birthday, Kelly Painter, Julie Darrow, Chris Jackson, Chucky. I miss going fishing with them. We did a lot of checking. I did a lot of fishing down the Keys. We gotta, you got to come back from Texas and we got to go out there. Um, Carl Garofalo, happy birthdays. And we have some upcoming birthdays. By the way, it'll be our former downtowner of the year's birthday uh, tomorrow, uh, Heiko Dobrico. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, happy birthday, Heiko. Hey. Next, I'm going to give him a birthday ahead of time. Oh, man. Is, is right, Calvin awesome McDaniel, uh, Bina Jacob, uh, Wayne Filowitz. Bina. Yeah, Brian Bolton, Saji Valencia, Mario Sarvalis, Melissa Brin, and Vivian Baker. Happy birthday, guys. Happy birthday, everybody. Happy birthday. All right, that was yeah, Team JK TV. All right, thanks, guys. We really appreciate it. Um, for all of you guys with the birthdays, Jay and Jonathan are going to sing to you guys privately. You just have to call them up. That's that's coming. We'll check us out next Wednesday. Oh, man, oh, man. <laughs> man. <laughs> all right, check us out next Wednesday at 2 p.m. Um, and we'll be going live again. You can always check out this episode and every other episode at teamjktv.com, Facebook at Jonathan Keith, IG at Team JK Real Estate. And that is a wrap. Thank you, guys. Take care. Hey, 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 everybody have a great day.